Okay, guys. So I don't know how many people are here, but uh, yeah, I see even some people who are from my faculty. Um, can you write in the chat what are your uh, aspirations? What are you currently studying and what career are you pursuing? So I would like to later on get to the chat and get to know a little bit more about yourself and uh, how we can make this um, session more useful to your individual aspirations. Um, what we have planned to talk about is, as I initially told you, for people who study finance, people who study business uh, management and legal sciences, so mainly social sciences. But if someone else uh, here has other aspirations, I will be very pleased to hear them. So we started in the beginning of this meeting that um, uh, we will structure the call. I will uh, share a few things about my experience, my career, but then I will uh, give you, for example, how I believe you should, um, what steps you need to take to advance your career. And uh, I will share a few good examples of um, people I know who have advanced in their career and a few bad examples of what you should not do in your career. And yeah, if you have any questions, uh, join with the microphone, with your cameras. I'll be happy that uh, you are uh, yeah, joining the call and sharing your opinions, any questions, feel free to join. Okay, so uh, probably you know, my name is Lily. Uh, Jekov, I'm from Bulgaria. I studied law school. After that, uh, I found out that I have a huge interest for finance and I wanted to become my own boss. So I went through a freelancer to finally having my own business in the uh, sphere of finance. It was not uh, easy, but uh, it was worth it. And the biggest... Uh, gift I have from doing the, the job and the business I like is um, at first place the freedom I have so uh, I really do enjoy what I do every day uh, and there are some drawbacks which I will share later on with you nothing is perfect and it does cost something to achieve uh, this freedom but uh, I would not change my decisions for what I have now so, of course, studying is what everyone does in university. And if someone is not doing it, probably he's not even on this call. Um, you don't have much time and you should not waste it with uh, stupid parties. And you should have done that in high school, probably. <laughs> That's how I did it. Uh, I was partying and drinking before I got to university. And the moment I stepped in, I was every day going to every class. Even I was doing double classes so that I could hear what professor one was thinking and what professor number two is thinking opposite of the other one. So I was very ambitious and interested. And the day I graduated law school was the day I started studying finance straight directly. I applied for a finance program. Uh, how I went into finance was very interesting. I had a client on Airbnb who was a finance student in Bukoni. It's one of the best universities for finance in Europe, in Milan. And he told me that he's in crypto blockchains and he uh, told me that he wants my legal support for his startup. So I went with him in his business to uh, help him uh, figure out the legal side. And he gave me a percent of the shares. And later on, I met other people in finance with a lot of experience who became my mentors. And they told me, Lily, you should go into compliance because it's a mix between finance and uh, law. Um, so I knew that I wanted to, to continue with finance and I'm really interested in it because uh, initially with cryptocurrencies, um, they were my initial interest, but I uh, really fast found out that to understand the future of finance, you, under, you need to understand traditional finance. So I decided to go back and understand how finance really works to be able to uh, work in crypto successfully because there were many scams at the time. It was 2017. And uh, yeah, I, I want to have strong academic background in this field in order to have a true business which would work. Uh, so I started a PhD in finance and after that I teach now for a fourth year in university, mainly finance students about general finance theory and public finances. 
So I can say that the last five years I've been devoting my time time to finance, but then I also have uh, the business with the clients where I'm giving uh, legal advice and basically paying my bills with the legal advices I give. And they are mainly about startups, about people who want to create finance ventures and so on. So I try to bridge finance and law with my expertise and help my clients. So uh, for me, going into law and finance is great, but it's just not enough. Having all this uh, knowledge, you need a lot of other things to be able to succeed, to run your own business, to work with clients. And uh, I will share with you what, in my opinion, is the best way, the best tactic so that you can become from a student to a freelancer, to a business owner, so that you are independent, you run your own business and you take the profits from your knowledge and your expertise and don't, you don't let other people take um, the value from your work. Because when you're an employee, um, basically you work, but everything you earn goes for your employer. So a lot of people are in the corporate, um, let's say environment, stuck in this mindset. And I believe that uh, corporate um, institutions, they can give you a lot, but they can also take a lot. And once you get used to work in a corporation, you have this fixed income, which becomes like a chain. So you get used to it and um, it can be very risky because you say, I'm gonna be in the corporate world, world and later on, I will set up my business when I gain experience when I'm 30 or 40, but this time never comes because the, the more you become older, the less you're able to risk. The times when you're able to risk the most is in your 20s when you're young. So you have nothing to lose and you should just try. And yeah, okay, let's go. <laughs> so everyone has computer skills nowadays, but how uh, good are your computer skills compared to others? Just knowing the existence about the Word, Excel, uh, Canva workspace, and um, this is not enough. Basically, you need to have a competitive advantage in front of other people, which means that you need to be proficient in using Excel. In finance, this is mandatory. So you need to know all the functions, you need to be able to use it very well. And this is just a bare minimum. Uh, the same goes for Word. You need to know how to use um, the programs in a very advanced way. For people who study finance, studying Python is a really, really good idea. So for example, my partner for the first business I started, he was, as I told you, studying um, finance in Bukoni and he also studied Python. Furthermore, how he advanced his career was he did a CFA. He just passed the first uh, certificate and straight after he graduated, he went into JP Morgan uh, on their trading desk. He also was in crypto and he managed to um, end his corporate career just in four months and got a very good timing. So he managed to raise like something like $5 million. So he set up his second startup and they are building um, futures exchange in a decentralized way. And yeah, he's a great example of someone who has been advancing in his finance career very successfully. So I believe for anyone who is studying finance seriously and wants to be ahead of his uh, competitors, the other students, you should definitely go for Python. Um, and then if you want to uh, advance your career um, in terms of being able to market your ideas and um, yeah, sell them, then you should have some design powers. Nowadays, it's really easy to create any content with Canva. So don't use PowerPoint, in my opinion, use Canva and try to get the most out of it. Um, and then you're young now, so why not try to build your own website? If I were you, I would, doing, I would be doing just for fun, uh, having my own first website. So imagine you have the skills to build your own website. Tomorrow you want to start your startup. This is the first step to have um, business to create a good website. There are many online programs like uh, Squarespace and many other uh, programs which are very easy to use. So you don't need to be a programmer nowadays. And yeah, this this about website building. Then ChatGPT, everyone is using it, but how good are you in using it? Uh, 
this is another topic. So basically, in the workforce, whenever you are working for a company from now on, everyone will be able to use ChatGPT. You need to be better than others. So you need to start studying how you can give um, good instructions in order so that you can receive the most out of it. There are tons of um, nowadays um, chat GPT prompts. So you need to be able to uh, work with it and use it to your advantage. Don't be one of those people who is against technology because you would be on the losing side. People who are against technology have not won until now. There were, for example, many people in the past who were like, oh, GPS is uh, not necessary. I have my map. Nowadays, they're also using Google Maps. You cannot get anywhere. You're wasting time and uh, it's meaningless to go against technology. So there are other AI programs that you should also research and you should take advantage of um, AI and not be scared of it because no matter if you embrace it or not, they're here to stay. Uh, point number two or like step number two is university exchange program. Uh, if you haven't done a university exchange program, I highly recommend that you do one. It should be the further uh, you can go, the better. So, for example, you're studying now in Edinburgh. My advice would be first go to the U.S. And after that, maybe a second exchange program, go to Hong Kong. So uh, you cannot become a global citizen without traveling different continents, getting to know different cultures. This will help you a lot because every time you go abroad, you go out of your comfort zone. And every time you go out of your comfort zone, you learn something new. So university exchange programs are really something that you should definitely be doing. Number three, networking. So I've been going myself to a lot of social clubs, event conferences, and I learned a lot from different uh, presenters on those conferences, how to present, even now, today, I have a public speaking fright, so I'm not really uh, comfortable speaking in front of audience. It's always been a, a problem for me, but I still push myself and I do it. And I have gained a lot because you can make a lot of uh, contacts in this way, and those people later on can help you in your career. Sports uh, is another way to meet people. And then, for example, when I was in university, I would always study in the library where I would be with other people and we would get to know each other better, create friendships. And one of the best times in my life was actually studying in the library with my colleagues uh, from university. So uh, you should also try that if you're not doing it already. Mm. I guess many of you have already done some internships. Um, can I see the chat somewhere, Rudra? Um, yeah, it should be on the top. It should be on an option, okay. but it shows the recording. So uh -huh. that... Okay, so can someone share with me uh, what internship he has done or she? To make this more uh, communicative so you can also take participation. So maybe... Rudra, maybe you can tell something about your internship experience. <laughs> yeah sure um yeah so uh my first internship was at one seven capital itself and it was a perfect opportunity for me to like deep my feet into um blockchain development and like the consulting and um stuff like that which i believe was really important and uh like that was my first way to get into blockchain development and i did research learned about MakerDAO, Ethereum, and stuff like that. And um, yeah, and after that, I did an internship at the National Library, which again helped me like understand um, like the IT software and even like the different databases that they have. And like what makes, like how difficult it is to maintain whether like 1 million books and like, you know, how there's transactions happening every single time. And those are the things that um, my internships, like that helped me learn a lot. Those are my internships okay. in the summer. Maybe Stephanie wants to share something about her internships. Yeah, so I did a summer internship in the insurance industry. So I worked for an insurance brokerage and I just had an account manager type role. So I was just responsible for some contracts and then also another research project, which I really enjoyed doing. Okay, great. Um, how did you guys uh, hear about those internships? Where did you find them? 
Um, I first one was to LinkedIn. Um, so it was, it was an application that was out that one selling capital is searching for interns and I just applied. And okay. That was an interview. But, Stephanie, yeah. where did you find your internship? Um, I just found it online through various like job boards and then I just applied and interviewed like same process as any other place. Okay, so Stephanie, did you apply with uh, you applied with a CV with a letter cover letter or how was yeah, it? Yeah, I applied with a CV and I can't remember if you had to submit a cover letter, but you had to do um one of those timed video interviews, one of those automatic ones. But I remember like I thoroughly prepared for the questions, and then because like I had prepared, I think that gave me like a good advantage. Yeah, so. Uh... It's true when Rudra was uh, applying for our internship project in my company, we received maybe 30 different CVs from all over the world. It was an online internship. And uh, he was, of course, one of the best candidates. We chose uh, maybe five or six people to uh, do the internship eventually. So how did we select him and other people to do the internships? It was purely based on their resumes. Anyone who sent more than two pages, two pages is even too much, but over one page, it it wouldn't be as good as if a, uh, we received a short resume. Because you are young people and we expect to see just from a few seconds watching at your CV what you are offering us um, and what are your skills, what is your experience. So. It's very important how you present yourself uh, in the CV. And of course, after that, in the interview, the way that you speak, the way that you uh, present yourself can be also very important. So preparation, as Stephanie shared, is key. Every time that you prepare more, you are going to be ahead. Um, my advice when it comes to interviews, because I've done also some interviews like you in the past, for my internships when I was a student, was to present myself for every job or every interview as this is my dream job. So every time I would go to an interview, I would make the employer believe that this is my dream job. I'm ready to do anything to get this job. And after that, I've been to five interviews and I gave them each one of this idea that this is my dream job. They all wanted to take me and then I could go back and I could choose which one is the best. Otherwise, if I would be like, uh, okay, I don't know this is, if this is for me, uh, maybe it's not so good. Uh, this would not let me make the choice eventually. So my advice to you guys is next time you go to an interview, make them believe that this is your best choice and your first choice and you're really ready to do anything to work there. The employers, they want to see that you're serious, uh, not only that you have great resume, but also that you will choose them and you will stay long in the company. They don't want to um, give you uh, their know-how and to take care of you in the internship because during the internship, it's mainly that the employer is teaching the employee. They want to know that you will be stay there. Uh, you are going to stay there for a longer period in time and the uh, time that they invest in you will get back to them. So yeah, my uh, advice is to prepare well, to make perfect resume that is just one page and uh, yeah, just go to many interviews and uh, impress them. <laughs> okay, uh, so for the next step I have prepared for you guys is a side job. So there is no bad job. Um, any job is uh, decent as long as you are uh, making money out of it. Okay, I cannot recommend that you go on OnlyFans. <laughs> this is something that uh, is against my uh, beliefs, but... In general, uh, students need money and uh, it is good that you, uh, if you have the opportunity, you choose though a job which is um, part-time that is connected to your studies. If you have a, a choice between, let's say, McDonald's and a job that is an internship in finance and the internship in finance is paid less compared to McDonald's, then if I were you and I can afford it, I would still choose the job which is lower paid, but will help you advantage your career in the future. So uh, even if you get a free internship, which is not paid, but it will give you essential skills, I would still take it if I can support myself in other ways. If this internship is in a big bank or in a high tech uh, company that I believe will help me learn new stuff, 
I would still choose this rather than um, a job that will give me uh, money, but won't learn, uh, won't help me further my career. So uh, professional internships, uh, you should do them a must in summer. This is mandatory. Every summer you should do different internship so that you can get a grasp of the finance field from different aspects. So one uh, hedge fund, one bank, one uh, tech startup, you should get different so that you can know what you like. And later on in your career, you can directly start from there. And uh, again, with internships, if you can do them in a foreign country, the best would be that you physically go there. And if you don't have the option, at least try to do something remote. And uh, another option is that you do it physically where you are. This is better than no internship at all. So try to do as many as possible different things in order to uh, gain experience and learn what you know or what you like. Because uh, in doing different internships, you will also be having the opportunity to, to learn what is your passion. And this is very important. I want to share with you now um, an example, a bad example of one of my very good friends. Unfortunately, she didn't go... Um, she didn't learn early what is her passion in life and she was trying to push it in the wrong direction. So first she went to Germany, she studied ph pharmacy, then she decided she doesn't like it, she came back to Bulgaria, she started uh, Mandarin. So four years of her life she studied Mandarin and after that she went to a master program in marketing and then she started graphic design. And then she found out she hates all of those stuff. So she wasted like 10 years of her life studying four or five different things. And then she ended up like, I hate this. I don't want to do anything of this. My dream is to be a housewife. I don't want to work actually. And um, the next second best thing I want to do if I'm not a housewife is I want to do arts. But for arts, I need to start studying again. So the problem, I think, is that she didn't have any practical experience from the beginning. Uh, if she had done some internships during her studies and she did not wait to graduate to start working, she would know that those things are not for her. And um, that's why you should know that finance is for you or not waste your time and the money of your parents to study in, in expensive university for many years to find out that finance is not for you. Uh, yeah, it's good that you learn what is your your passion, but also it's important to learn what you're good at. And what you're good at, you can learn by listening to your friends, your parents. They're the ones who know you very well. And I'm sure that uh, they often tell you, oh, you're great in this area, you should go do this. I'm sure that uh, they are uh, at thinking of, of your best interest. And uh, yeah, having a mentor is also another option. Uh, I had a mentor and my mentor was the one who recommended me to set up my own firm. And I'm very grateful to him for this advice because I found out that I don't want to be an employee and I want to have my own business. And uh, yeah, it worked out. Uh, okay. Does any one of you have his own startup already? Rudra had some venture, I think. Oh, it's still ongoing, but it's like okay. Yeah, it's ongoing with a startup. So yeah, it's but it's just, yeah, it's just it's in progress. You will let us know how it's going. Uh, it's um, really easy. For example, my just, first startup didn't didn't go so well, but this is um still learning. Yeah, I mean it's 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 like um it's basically like a software company where we're building um uh, like a whole interface where um like as a student you are going to create like a timetable mm -hmm. and it automatically does everything. So for example, you have like first five hours of your day free and then the last five, it dynamically arranges the time in such a way that you it automatically allo allocates all of your time in different subjects. So it'll spend wow. like two hours and it just autom it just it's because of the algorithm, it automatically does it. But yeah. It it sounds very good. I think there's something like Airtable. Yeah, it's Airtable is like more like a database, mm -hmm. but this okay. is more of like um it, it lets you create a flashcard, mind maps, 
and it tells you when to exactly do it throughout the day. I I already want to try this. Sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, it's it's still in the progress, but yeah, I'll I'll tell you when it like just goes up. Yeah. Okay. Someone else wants to share any uh anything about their own venture if they already have some experience in startups. I see in the chat that George Borzil wrote that he has done an internship in BlackRock Spring week so far. Or is this an internship? I don't know. But yeah, BlackRock is one of the industry legends. So if you get together, uh, if you have the chance to do an internship there, postpone your startup. <laughs> okay, number seven, soft skills. Uh, I, I learned sales when I was very young, actually, before even becoming 18. I always loved to sell stuff. Um, I went to the seaside in Bulgaria. I was selling um, uh, party tickets for some parties. Before that, I was selling uh, when I was a child in front of my home, uh, my drawings to just random people on the street. I just, I'm really good in sales. I don't want to brag, but uh, this is one of my uh, talents that I've been suppressing and actually I think I should do more sales. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, sales can always help you. you uh, you're selling everything everywhere. Like I'm selling myself to you right now and Rudra is selling his startup to us and uh, you are selling your uh, knowledge, not your knowledge, but how good you are when you go to a test to the professor. So sales or being able to convince other people is a very useful skill. And the more you are good in sales, the more you will be able to persuade others to do what you want. Uh, marketing is important uh, as well. Um, being able to market your products. Yeah. Uh, teamwork, for example, in Rudra startup uh, example, it's very important when you're doing a startup that you manage to convince other people to work on this shared uh, idea. If you're not able to work in a team, everything becomes very difficult that you do it yourself. It's not easy. And the next thing in soft skills for me, which is very important is persistence. So yeah, being able to continue no matter that it looks difficult, um, I think it's important being organized as well, managing others and public speaking. Like me, if you're not good in public speaking, go for it still and you will improve with time. I, I used to be far worse than now. <laughs> so uh, number eight, become a global citizen. If you have only been in Europe, this is not enough. You definitely need to go to um, America, to the US, for example, Canada and Asia. Um, for example, Hong Kong, this is amazing place. I really recommend you should go visit. And there are many other places which are um, very good in Asia. And you will be able to learn Asian culture much more easily when you're there. Certificates, when it comes to finance, I recommend uh, you go for CFA if you want to become a um, financial analyst. So this certificate will allow you to work anywhere in the world. Uh, from New York to London to Shanghai, anywhere. CPA uh, and CFP, also other type of certificates. And uh, yeah, the plan is um, like the concept is that you go through all those steps and you, you gain both network experience and expertise until, for example, your last year in university where you um, start building your own company. Your own company should allow you two things. First, you sh it should start giving you immediately some revenues, money that you can support yourself. And what can you sell immediately that you already have? If you've been studying well in university and you have gained all those skills, soft skills and network, then you will be able to make money from your expertise, which means sell your consulting services. This is something that you don't need um, too much, of course, if you have a lot of experience, it helps. Uh, but if you've done a few internships, there are a lot of different um, online platforms like uh, Flickr, I think it was called Upwork and so on, where you can find clients based on uh, your resume, your portfolio and so on. And they will know that you don't have much experience because they can see how many hours you've committed work. But uh, you can start with a lower pay. 
So you can sell your services cheaper than others. This is where you become a freelancer. So you are an employee somewhere here while you're doing your internship, while you're doing the side job, here you're an employee, and here you become a freelancer. You still run your own company and the income goes into your company. Then uh, what I would do is uh, use my network from here and my soft skills and build a team. With the team, I would create a prototype and create my own either service or product, uh, which I would start uh, then selling as an idea to investors. And this is the step 13, where you try to find financing for your ideas. It's great that Rudra has a startup now, but it's not enough. He needs financing in order uh, to keep his team motivated and to be able to uh, make his uh, project ongoing. Um, so basically from uh, step 11, you need the money to live, right? Every month you have expenses um, and you need to support yourself. But if you want to invest in the future and to make uh, a real business, then you need employees, you need to gather them and you need to organize them in a way that they can create a product that will be appealing to investors because uh, probably your product would not be uh, at the level that is finished so well so that you can sell it directly to clients. If you are able to finish it without investments, it's even better, but this is less likely. Uh, less likely. Uh, so yeah, external financing, um, for example, for me, uh, the way to find external financing was based on my network for example, I went to do a summer job in Ibiza. I met there many years ago uh, a person who became a very close friend and he has been track recording my career ever since. So he was uh, he became my first investor later on. Mm. And he let me run his uh, portfolio to wealth manage it. And I've been building my uh, portfolio management experience by uh, managing his funds and later on uh, some other friends of mine funds. Mm -hmm. But thanks to him believing in my skills, I gained this practical experience of managing money, which I had not had before. Um, so yeah, for example, I would recommend that you focus on places which are capital um, intensive, uh, such a place as Dubai, a place where you can meet a lot of investors, people who have a lot of capital and they don't want to uh, work so hard, but they want to uh, have this capital being managed or invested in ventures managed or run by other people. So London is a place with a lot of competition. Most of you will probably want to go there and would like to go into an investment bank or a hedge fund as we spoke previously. But I believe that uh, you should not have this as your only option, but you should be more open to explore ways that you can become independent and have your freedom and become your own boss. Because once you are in the corporate um, atmosphere, it's really hard to escape. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> uh, when you get the financing from there, step 14 is to develop your product and to start marketing so that you can meet the end clients. So if you follow all these paths, you will be able to uh, get the uh, the way from an employee to a freelancer to an employer and be able finally to outsource outsource work to others, which I think is very pleasant and nice. And uh, how actually you the first 10 years of your life would look like, uh, they will be stressful. There will be many evenings where you spend in the office and you might even gain weight. So it's not very pleasant. And there is a lot of uh, public transport you need to take and uh, it can be quite stressful actually. So this is not for everyone. And uh, if you're not ready to have a stressful, intense life, maybe it's not for you. <laughs> and what does it cost you? As I told you in the beginning of my presentation, you always pay a price. And most cases, I know you don't believe me now, but it costs you your family. I mean, like, instead to have a family at a young age, to become a, a parent, to have a spouse, or to go to parties, you are actually investing everything in your business and in your career. And most people who have brilliant careers often are lonely. They don't have girlfriends, they don't have a boyfriend, because 
when your only objective is to have a, achieve a great career, you have to move between cities, between countries, be, between continents. It's hard for your partner to wait for you and it's not a way to run a family. So you need to know that business careers can often, um, at least for the first 10 years, not be compatible with having a family life. And this is not a small price to pay. And I don't think many people understand that uh, achieving their career has a price as well. And there are a lot of alternatives. Um, there are many different things that you, you can do besides studying. Um, you can be very successful even without a career. You can uh, be successful even without studying, but nothing is easy. And whatever you decide to do, it will be difficult. This is what you need to know. So yeah, this is my presentation and now should be more freestyle uh, and hear more what you are interested in. <laughs> I guess we could start talking about CS or computer science if you have any like background and knowledge on that. About what? Sorry. Um, computer science. Uh, about computer like science. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't have a computer science background. Um, most of the people here, um, not with finance background. I told them it's finance background. <laughs> Okay, about computer sciences, uh, unfortunately, I'm not the person to be able to give you the best advice, but uh, from what my friends in this area are doing, there have been a lot of successful startups. So working for yourself in computer science is not difficult at all. There are a lot of um, um, US ventures which allow you um, uh, which can outsource you a lot of work. So, for example, in Bulgaria, most of the successful businesses are actually computer science businesses, IT projects, and so on. And uh, I think it's really easy to build your own startup in computer science nowadays. So if you want to go for this type of career, definitely it's a good idea. And uh, if you can combine it with finance, then you're into something really big. As I told you, Python, for example, is a software that uh, should be used both by financiers and uh, IT professionals. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm interested to know more from the other participants. What did you study in, uh, in Edinburgh? So please um, write me in the chat. For example, um, a friend of mine, he's from Sofia, again, Bulgarian. He and his brother did their own startup. So one of them is a business development person and the other person is an um, IT engineer. And they created a startup during the uh, COVID times. So there are two brothers. One of them was going to university and the other one was uh, working uh, in an outsourcing firm and during his work in this it was kind of a call center he managed to create his own startup and uh, raise something like two million so I, I think the, the the way he did it was uh, that he was um, cooperating very strongly with his brother and he had a very strong belief in himself um, others did not believe in him so much but with his strong persistence he managed to succeed and of course there was a lot of IT half of the work was done by his brother and they kind of shared the uh, the profits from this venture so yeah with uh, blockchain startups IT is a big uh, part of the whole thing uh, and computer engineering but uh, you need to be very fast and be um, when there is a wave, like a bull market, you need to be developing something like really fast in order to raise the financing and secure your development of the project for the 
upcoming months later on when for example the market is not going well like it's not going well now <laughs> well guys if there are no more questions it was uh, really an honor to talk to you and to give you my experience in this uh, field of career development i hope you enjoyed and you learned something new um, there is one book that i can share with the participants of today meeting about career development in english Maybe Rudra can send it to you. I will send him the PDF and he can forward it to everyone. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Oreo. Thank, well, thank you so much for this amazing presentation <laughs> and taking us to your journey. It was my pleasure. <laughs> nice having such young people and uh, yeah seeing that you liked it makes me happy <laughs> okay guys have a nice uh, evening everyone and uh, wish a lot of success to you and your careers if you have any questions feel free to contact me this is my email no i'm gonna give you my other email Yeah, for any career advice you need, I'm here to help. I'm always uh, very happy to engage with young people and be able to uh, further their career. <laughs> uh, so there's a text on the chat where uh, someone's asking, where can they find this book? Uh, I can send you the book via uh, email. Just send me an email on my email, lily at onestallion.capital, and I will forward it to you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. I guess, yeah. I mean, to stop, I think you'll have to stop the recording. Yeah, yeah of course.